Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Ivan Salazar. I'm uh, the Senior Marketing Director over at Karancha uh, US. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. And uh, we're here with a special uh, pre-recorded Karancha Live. Um, we're gonna be talking about the uh, March 2022 digital debuts and giving you a close look at, um, you know, some of the series that are coming out as well as extended previews about two very special series that uh, Tomo and I uh, uh, really enjoyed and wanted to talk about. So uh, with that, I want to introduce uh, Tomo Tran. Please uh, tell us uh, about yourself. Hey, thanks, Ivan. So this is Tomo here. I'm also uh, part of the marketing and sales. And you know, uh, today we wanted to uh, talk about, like Ivan said, the March 2022 uh, new digital releases. And yeah, this is going to be exciting. There's some new titles that um, I think will appeal to many, many uh, fans out there and um, let us know like, you know, in the comments, like which one's your favorite or which one you're looking forward to um, reading. All right, and then uh, let's jump into the previews. These are series that are gonna be starting for the first time with volume ones in March. And uh, we're giving you short previews of uh, these series, but by the time that this video comes out, you can read the entire chapter one free on karancha.us. So let's jump into what's showing up in March. And also, Ivan, we have um, yeah. a live chat today, right? That That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chat with us. So, yeah. yeah so, if you can explain it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, while uh, you all linger on this uh, wonderful first sampling, um, yeah, we have a live chat running right now. Uh, if you're watching us, you're probably watching us on YouTube. And uh, there's a chat going on where you'll probably see some prompts um, both uh, Tom and I are going to be uh, monitoring the chat digitally. So while you're seeing us recorded in this video, uh, you're actually going to be talking to us uh, through the video chat on YouTube. So, we'll be looking for you. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So uh, going into uh, our first title, let's talk about Twilight Out of Focus. Um, this is by uh, Jan Elm. And uh, this is actually a really cute uh, BL story. Um, it's about uh, these high school kids who live in uh, and go to school in an all boys dormitory or all boys school. And uh, um, the, what's called uh, one of the kids, Mao, is actually part of the sort of like movie club, like uh, where they make movies with uh, this new story that's being produced is actually gonna be a BL movie. And uh, at this point, uh, his roommate, who is um, secretly in closeted gay, uh, who has an actual boyfriend, is uh, asked by the director of the uh, club to be part of this BL uh, movie that they're producing. Now, um, there's a lot of secrets uh, floating around, and uh, suddenly uh, Mao starts to realize that though they had established uh, to not be romantically involved because they are roommates, starts to realize that he indeed does have some feelings for his roommate. Um, so it's called, uh, this is coming out at the beginning of March, March 1st. Uh, it is rated 18 plus, uh, there will be some spicy scenes in it. So, uh, you know, just to give a heads up uh, for folks and just to give you a glimpse of the wonderful art that you'll find in it. Uh, this is actually from the very beginning of the uh, series or the volume. Um, is just them um, making sure to have a video record of the promises that they made for each other in order to remain roommates. Um, I love the art. I think that the the detailing and the styling of these characters are very cool. Um, and uh, I don't know, uh, as I'm sure is a lot of what BL shows, um, uh, very beautiful, slender uh, boys, as well as like uh, lovely hands. Uh, so for folks who are into BL stories, I do think this is gonna be a really fun one. So, Tomo, what do you got for us? All right, yeah. So the next one for this month is uh, Medica Kuroiwa is impervious to my charms. So this is, um, I guess you see the main character, the girl on the cover, her name's Mona, and she's like one of the most popular girls in the schools and um, you know all the, all the classmates really love her and she's always getting showered with praise, like you're so cute, you're so, you know, you're so sincere. And then, um, but she miss, meets this, um, her other, her classmate, uh, Medaka Kuroiwa, who is actually um, going to become um, a priest. Yeah, that, uh, so he's like really stoic um, and he looks very like um, always 
like cold, like, you know, poker face. And so, you know, Mona's, Mona's like, how come, you know, he's not falling for me? How come, he, you know, I'm, I'm trying to act cute and he's always giving me this stone cold face. And so she, you see, she's like acting like a cat. She, she thinks that, you know, he likes cats or something. So she's acting like a cat. And then, um, and then he's still like, you know, please leave me alone. And she's like, oh no, like this, why is he, why does he hate me? You know, why, why doesn't he respond to me? And this is her goal, I guess, in this, in this manga is to try to get his attention. Um, but actually on the flip side, if you see these panels, actually Kuroiwa is actually just trying to um, be cool. He actually wants to talk to her. He's actually like, she, he really does think she's cute, but uh, I like his catchphrase, um, worldly desires be gone. And he's trying to clear his <laughs> mind of like the dirty thoughts and yeah. stuff like that and tries to act super cool. Um, this is kind of really similar to like Nagatoro-san yeah. Uh, or like when will Ayumu make his move? So if you're like a big fan of those uh, series, I think definitely check this one out. Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Going into the next series, uh, A Kiss with a Cat. Um, this is a very cute uh, shoujo romance uh, focusing around uh, Erina, uh, who is this, uh, you know, haughty, uh, popular girl that everybody uh, loves and uh, her interactions with a very special boy named uh, Nekoyama-kun, um, which uh, as you might suspect has something to do with uh, something with cats. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. No, no. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> the, the, the secret uh, of this story and it's a very just straightforward premise. He turns into a cat. Uh, is this isn't a spoiler, they tell you about it in the first uh, chapter and you can uh, see a little bit in these preview pages um, where it's kind of a straightforward story where you know once uh, uh, Nekoyama-kun kisses a creature he turns into a cat or if he's a cat and kisses a creature then he turns into a boy. Um, is he naked in this? Uh, in he this is category? naked in this. Okay. Uh, what's it called? Let's let's go back real quick. This is a 16 here? plus so uh, <laughs> some nudity, but not uh, anything like super explicit. <laughs> okay. um, the the funny thing about this is that uh, Nekoyama-kun is much more cat than human. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the, the things that cats do, just like walking over your stuff, um, ignoring you until they want you to pay attention to them, um, you know, all those sort of things. Uh, Nekoyama-kun uh, exhibits those. Um, to a T. Uh, and I think that that's kind of like part of the humor of this uh, romance story is that uh, this character is so much like a cat that all of the sort of social mores that people have about, you know, romance and being with each other, like he's like, oh, I don't care about those. Like, you know, this this person is, you know, uh, this person is my owner, I'm their cat. Like the, you know, why is it weird? Um, but uh, I think that this is a, this is a fun story for uh, folks who are into, um, you know, that wolf boy is mine, uh, or um, this is this is a much more uh, lighthearted uh, and straightforward comedy version of um, Fruits Basket. Uh, similarly, people transforming into uh, animals, but in this case, he seems to be really fine about it. It's just the condition he has. So, <laughs> is the cat on the cover? Is that him, or is that a different cat? Yes, that is him. He's oh, a very surly okay. looking cat. Yeah. Uh, at, yeah, the cat kind of is the comedic looking cat. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Tomo, what do you got for us? All right. The next title we have is Piano Duo for the Left Hand by Kenta Matsuoka. So um, on the cover, you see our main character, one of the main characters, uh, his name is Shu. He's uh, kind of like a, you know, and I can see him, he's like like a delinquent. And he's like, always, in the beginning scene, like he's fighting with people, like he's punching people. And then um, he, and then later on, he meets this girl um, at the school. Uh, she's a talented uh, pianist, Akari Yuzuki. And he's like, whatever, I don't really care about, you know, her or, you know, I don't really care about piano, whatever. And then, you know, as fate would have it, they're riding on the same train. They both missed their stops for some reason. <laughs> and I guess Akari, like she was sleeping um, and Shu was kind of like daydreaming or like kind of being annoyed and stuff. And then they happen to get off the same uh, station and, um, you know, they start talking about, um, you know, themselves. And, um, you know, Akari says like, you know, she, 
she really loves playing the piano because she she loves it. She she wants to play it, and this kind of throws Shu like off. Like wow, like okay, she's really passionate about piano, and they get to talking about like you know um, maybe you should um, uh, you know come and I want to show you why I love the piano, and this is kind of his story of to become like a pianist himself. So this is I, I feel like the, the vibes are similar to. Um, Blue period in that sense, blue period with the piano, or if you like no dame cantabile, that's kind of like you know, the piano yeah. story. So this is uh, definitely um, something if you're interested in the arts, I, I would definitely recommend. Yeah, the art is really slick on this one, and I'm very excited at how uh, they represent music because I know that the like in blue period, the way they represent art, it, like it's very moving, and like yep. the way that. Uh, creativity connects with the characters is one of the like biggest you know cool points of Blue Period. So I'm very excited to see where uh, Piano Duo is uh, gonna go. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I guess you know imagining the like sounds and stuff of the yeah. piano and stuff. So that, mm -hmm. that's another element to this story. Absolutely. All right. Uh, next one uh, that I'm looking at is Getting Closer to You, another shoujo romance. Uh, this one's a 13 plus, so it's a, a little bit softer. Um, but it is about uh, Kahu, who is a self-proclaimed or, um, you know, uh, expert on muscles. Uh, <laughs> she just really loves muscles, loves muscled uh, uh, dudes. Um, because when she was a kid, she was saved at the beach by a muscle-bound, uh, uh, you know, lifeguard after being, you know, pulled out into the ocean. And ever since, like, muscles equal justice. That's uh, her philosophy. Um, and uh, but like, you know, this is uh, kind of really cute. Uh, they're the the latest group of you know high school boys. She's gonna go check out for muscles is the basketball club. And you know, after almost falling off uh, a ladder while checking out these boys, uh, she's confronted by the muscle prince of the basketball troop. Um, and be you know, from fainting a little bit because of <laughs> seeing uh, such a hot muscle guy, uh, he finds out that you know uh, her secret journal of muscle, and so like, hey, uh, these are some really detailed notes. Um, would you like to be? our basketball manager mm -hmm. um, and, you know, cause like we, we think, you know, he's like, you know, I think that you can actually like help us out with like, you know, how detailed you are about everything and how, you know, serious you are about, you know, improving your physique. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she quickly becomes uh, the manager of this basketball team and is trying to whip them into shape to be the most muscle bound group of boys at the high school. Um, but little uh, by little, even by the end of the first chapter, you start to see a little bit of romance between the muscle prince and the muscle maniac. Um, so I think this is gonna be uh, really cute. Uh, and I do love how capable they really do make her. Like as silly as it is that uh, she's so uh, into muscles, once she gets uh, you know put on the task of being the basketball manager, she takes it very seriously and is trying to help like you know the entire team. So uh, I really like this sort of like eccentric, but uh, very thoughtful character who's like, you know, try just trying to do her best um, and, you know, reap the benefits of being around a, bun a bunch of muscly boys. Mm. Um, if you are interested in this title, please put a muscle emoji in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Then, then we'll know who's really into this, yeah. one, right? We can chat with them later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, in the first chapter, they don't get too far into the uh, basketball side. So uh, I think uh, this falls a little bit more in line with, I believe, Waiting for Springtime, which is mm. our other yep. basketball shoujo. Yes, um, yes. So uh, much more into the romance it is on the sports side, but that is all going to collide uh, to later on. So, cool. Um, Tomo, what do you got for us? All right. So this is another um, kind of, you know, shoujo, kind of rom-com-ish title that we have, uh, similar vein, um, I'll be with them again today, so by uh, Nagisa Komugi. So this uh, centers around the, our main female character, Nao, and she finds out like um, there's a new neighbor coming to town, and uh, it's one of her mom's uh, friends, and she also has a son that's the same age as her, and she's kind of peeking, kind of like the, the muscle story. She kind of looks and she peeks and looking through the window and then she sees this uh, 
really handsome guy. Look, she's like, oh my god, see? <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, oh, it's so handsome. Like, my eyes are so, it's so bright, I can't even see, right? And so, and he's very cool. He's very nice to her. And it's kind of like a start of a romance. And so she's really excited. They're going to go to the same school. Um, I guess the only, um, the wrench in this, uh, in the story is this other boy actually that's her bro that's her brother so he is like he hates her a lot and he he's always annoyed you see on this panel so he tells um our you know our male protagonist uh his name is uh hold on let me see my notes chosuke so his name's chosuke her brother name is uh tomoyasu and so tomoyasu is saying like man she's mad loud i hate her guts and uh be careful of her yeah. And but every day they like uh, go to school together, they're walking together. So she's just like trying to shake her brother off and stuff like that and try to, um, you know, try to get this romance going with uh, Kyosuke. So yep. it's kind of a fun story, um, you know, brother and the the lover and then what's going to happen. Yeah. What's going to happen? I don't know. Maybe maybe the brother is going to start falling for this girl, too. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I hope. <laughs> Yeah, I, I hope it's not like uh, an. It, I think it's it's a 16 plus title, so it's hmm. not gonna be like domestic girlfriend. But I did get some right, domestic right. girlfriend vibes, like you know the the neighbor and stuff hmm. like that, and you know it's like a romance school life kind of kind of yeah, vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. makes sense. No. All right. Uh, next one I got is Boots Leg. Uh, this is uh, by uh, uh, Suzohito uh, Yasuda, and it's gonna be coming out at the end of March. Um, this is rating 16 plus, uh, just because it has a little bit of intense uh, action and adventure in this one. It is kind of like a straight up uh, shonen, uh, but I think what's kind of neat is that it uh, features a character who, um, by uh, fate of being attacked uh, by this sort of like uh, powerful being called Handshake, um, this uh, character Zen loses his parents, loses his sister uh, to this, you know, attack and actually ends up losing his leg below the knee um, as a, it seems to be part of this uh, villain's uh, handshake, like sort of calling card to just, you know, take people's body parts. Um, but like it has very energetic and kinetic uh, um, shonen sort of action, um, so, uh, which I think is like, gets even more intense, even as you get into the battles. Uh, just give a sample here, but, but again, by the time that this video comes out, if you go to kanach.us, you can read the whole first chapter. Uh, and by the end of the first chapter, he finally unlocks uh, the, the full potential of the leg that he has, because that leg was actually designed by a mysterious person that you know can view these prosthetics with a lot of power. So um, I think that this is uh, gonna be something like some really fun to check out um, as a sort of a straight up shown story of a kid who trains really hard to, you know, get revenge for his family uh, and then gets, you know, enveloped into a world where these group of people that have been affected by these villains uh, are gonna fight against them. Um, so mm -hmm. highly so recommend this one. So on the cover, like his uh, his left leg, that's the special leg that he has. That is a special leg, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, ever since uh, he'd gotten that prosthetic, he'd been training uh, to try and, you know, fight Handshake whenever he shows up again. But um, unfortunately, by the time that he does show up, he thinks that he's not quite uh, yet ready to face him. Mm -hmm. um, but with the power of his leg, he uh, kicks a bunch of butt. Um, but it goes from there. So, I don't know. Uh, check out the first chapter. Uh, check out the first volume when it comes out. I think it's going to be real cool. Um, it's fun. Let's go to the next one. Boom, boom. Tell me what do you got. Yeah. So, this is Hirayeth, the end of the journey. Uh, so, this is about um, the girl on the cover. Her name is Mika. And at the beginning of the story, uh, she loses one of her best friends. Uh, and she, she dies. Um, and so, she, you know, she's really sad about it. This was one of her best, best friends. And... She's like, you know, I'm, I can't take it anymore. I really want to, um, you know, just join her. Um, and just, and so it's at the beginning, she, um, our, our, our main character, Mika, tries to commit suicide. Um, but uh, with the twist of events, um, if you can look at these panels, she meets these uh, two odd um, male figures. And um, one of them, the one in the white shirt, uh, introduces 
himself as a god and she's like okay these guys are crazy um <laughs> you guys like must be comedians or something yeah, like yeah, kind of yeah. trying to like put me through a you know throw me in a loop or something um but actually um these this the god figure um if you see on the next panel um that we have uh she sees him transform you see how he just goes behind the pole and turns into this majestic being and so she's like oh you really are a god like and um, he's actually there to help her kind of, um, you know, uh, see, um, you know, see what her, her, her life is about. And also um, he gives her a proposal to go to um, this world that um, I guess it's kind of like the afterworld, but um, they call it Yomi. Um, it's not really like hell or heaven, but it's just like where her friend supposedly is. And so they actually embark on a journey to go see her. Um, and yeah, so this is kind of like her journey to find herself and, um, you know, find her friend and then learn about the world. Like, you know, our, our God friend kind of shows her like different aspects of the, how he sees the world. And he has also like, a, I think it's, it kind of hints that he has a mission there as well. He has to go there for a reason to Yomi. So um, yeah, this is kind of, you know, there is a, a suicide warning for this. So if you're kind of nervous about those kind of topics, just kind of be aware of that. But um, it is it is a beautiful um, uh, a story, a beautiful manga. It's beautifully drawn, so I, I definitely um, recommend it. And also, I forgot to mention. Um, so this is the same author as um, Our Dreams at Dusk. If you, you're familiar with that title, Ivan? Um, yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that one's like, like a wonderful yeah. one. I know that we're going to be uh, publishing soon another uh, story called uh, Was it Shonen Note? Shonen Note. Yes. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, which, uh, more of a, like an agender, uh, uh, not agender, sorry, um, uh, asexual coming of age story, which is very cool. So like, I'm, I'm very excited that we're getting um, to publish more of uh, Kamatani. So. Yeah. So if, yeah, if you're a fan of, um, you know, this author, then yeah, definitely check this out as well. So. Cool. cool. Um, and as we mentioned a little bit earlier, we're going to be doing some deep dives into uh, two specific series that Tom and I thought uh, were really good spotlights for this coming slate of digital debuts coming in March. So we're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be starting with Having an Idol Boyfriend is the best. Uh, this is by Mito Aoi. Uh, and it's gonna be coming out actually at the beginning of the month, March 1st. Um, I really do think that this is um, a great story for folks who are uh, interested in stories like Wotkoi. Um, it is uh, sort of like more about like a, a older people, uh, you know, see them working in a part-time job at a cafe um, where basically these two unlikely folks who seem to have this contentious relationship uh, are actually bonded by one thing. They are both uh, maniacs about idols. Uh, both have their own favorites uh, and, you know, hang out together to watch the dramas, watch the performances. Uh, you know, text with each other about, you know, different uh, meet and greets that show up, different dramas that their favorite idols uh, end up getting on. And they, it's kind of this sort of shared experience of like loving, you know, idols and these groups that sort of uh, make this uh, 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 Onda-san um, realize that, you know what? Um, I think I like this person. And a lot of this is coming from a perspective of, you know, sure, being a man and loving idols is something that, you know, somebody might normally have to hide. And even um, uh, the woman character in this story uh, talks about how, you know, they have to sort of be a secret uh, idol otaku. Um, <laughs> but it's through this sort of like shared interest uh, that they became friends and um, what's called then uh at the end of the first chapter and like this is uh I mean, if you go to kanancha.us and read the first chapter it's not much of a spoiler but it is a little bit of a spoiler here mentioning it you know at the end of the first chapter onasan um confesses his feelings and you know wants to try to have a relationship um uh with his friend uh and what sort of continues is a kind of um trying it out 
Uh, I think that folks who are familiar with being in sort of close quarters and work situations, sometimes you end up having a work wife, a work husband, just somebody who you <laughs> sort of like lean on a lot. And I think this takes that story in a very cute direction because of this shared love interest of Bibles. Um, I love the art in this. It's like both very cute and very detailed. And yeah, they make all the idols incredibly handsome. Uh, so it's cool. I think this is a very uh, neat story that'd be uh, fun to check out. But I guess the title is Idol Loving Boyfriend. So they do, they do, they're going out. They are a couple, I guess. Yeah. Uh, by the end of the first chapter, they're like, okay. let's give this a shot. Um, and then, you know, what the story that's going to unfold is what is it like to actually jump from being friends who have deeply uh, shared interests to actually being in a relationship. Oh. Um, so I think that that's part of what the drama is going to be, as well as I'm sure uh, they're going to get to meet some of their idols and then, you know, maybe some other things are going to happen from there. <laughs> that's a neat uh, angle for the story, I know. Yeah. You know, and you know, like, you know, the K-pop groups are popular and like, Mm -hmm. I, mean, I see. I, yeah, when I when I saw this, when you were explaining it, like, if you were in a relationship with someone, you like BTS and they like BTS, <laughs> you guys yeah. have a relationship from that. Yeah, and like they they do explore like a little bit of the, you know, what is it like to have such a close relationship to someone who shares your interests, even if like you know they they both have their own favorites and their own you know groups that they follow, but they both really understand. Uh, each other's love for you know these idol groups and stuff like that and um, there's a, a really a cute panel where you know she talks about like oh it must be really difficult for Onda-san to um, go out on a limb to ask her uh, for a relationship when you know knowing that if she turned him down that that might end their friendship and you know the the fear that then losing somebody that you could be so open with and so mm -hmm. honest with in terms of like things that you're interested in. Um, so I think that this this has the potential to like explore some interesting concepts of friendships and relationships, similarly to Wotokoi, where it is sort of based in, you know, all of Takunis and these different characters sort of expressing um, each other's feelings as well as each other's love for like video games and anime and stuff like that, so. Very cool. Yeah, that's a fun one. I've never seen, yeah, I've never seen something like this. Yeah. Uh, Tomo, what do you got? All right, so the title I chose this month is uh, Apple Children of Eon by Ai Tanaka. Uh, and we have our main character, Yukino Joe, who's on the cover here. Uh, and he meets um, Asahi, uh, the female character here. And uh, it just starts out with them. Um, I guess it's like a setup marriage, what do you call it? Yeah. And then, uh, and then he's this, our main character, Yukino Joe, he's from, you know, the city. He's like uh, college educated and then he meets this uh, girl. She looks grumpy at first, right? He's like, kind of like, okay, what's up with her? But um, she's she's also, um, you know, she's an heir to Apple Farm. So by marrying her, um, you know, he's going to be taking over the Apple Farm, um, hence the title Apple Children. Um, and so she's pretty bold, you know, you see the panel where she's like, I want, can you marry me? Will you marry me? Kind <laughs> of with her, you know, her dialect. Um, and then he's like, okay, she's bold, you know, or all of a sudden, like in the same meeting, she asks him to marry and then, uh, if, and then boom, like you see them on the next panel, like they're, they're already married, <laughs> they, they do get married not long after and they, um, you know, and so Yukino Joe uh, gets kind of uh, his bearings on what, you know, what does it take to, uh, you know, be in charge of an apple farm, right? And he, he's kind of like struggling a little bit and learning a little bit about the business, like, you know, what, what are good apples and how do we, you know, how do we pick them and all that. Um, and then and then we kind of fast forward uh, to uh, the next panel. And one, one day he's um, kind of going out, um, his wife gets sick and he, he's looking for some apples to like give her um, kind of like as medicine and, you know, help her recover from her cold. And uh, he kind of, he, um, kind of comes across this big majestic tree and he's like whoa I've never seen this tree before like and um he sees some apples hanging from it and it he kind of uh it's kind of weird because it's in the middle of winter right and there's apples hanging um if you see on the next panel I think I grabbed one of the yeah so he's kind of staring at it like whoa there's apples and then he he pulls it and like this weird sound happens right and then like he feels this weird like vibe from the tree 
And he's like, whatever, okay. I'm, I'm confused, but I got my apple. I, I'm gonna give it to my wife. And so he comes back home and gives it to her. And um, he explains, you know, to um, her family and the, the village people like, oh yeah, I grabbed the apple from the tree. And they're like, what are you talking about? There's no apples on that tree. That's like a sacred tree. And, uh, and he's like, confusion, <laughs> you know, he's like, why? why What's going on? I asked the name better. And then he looks back at the apples he picked and uh, might be hard to tell from this uh, panel, but it actually turned to dirt. So the apple became dirt. So he's like, okay, this is weird. And um, he keeps asking um, the village people like, you know, hey, like, wh why can't I, um, you know, what's wrong with the apples um, that from that tree? And they're just like, oh, we can't talk about it. You know, they're kind of really being secretive about it. Um, so he's just like, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure out what, what's, what's mystery. Um, he fed the apple, but you know, her, his wife seemed okay, but um, there's something to, they're, they're gonna reveal something later on about what, what happens if you eat those apples. Um, so this is uh, like, I, I got vibes like, you know, drama mystery, kind of M. Night Shyamalan kind of, you know, yeah, kind of vibe, right? So. It's um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a dr dramatic story, and um, yeah, we kind of I think we'll later on as we we go forward, we're gonna find out you know what this title means. So yeah, I thought it was it's, it's beautifully drawn and um, you know had a lot of mysterious elements to it. So and I think that you know the author is very excited to um, have this in the English release too, from what I heard. So yeah, yeah, definitely definitely something to uh, keep an eye out for this title. Yeah, this looks like such a beautiful mystery too. Like I love all the, the like the ways that the massive tree was illustrated and the kind of detail of like cross hatching and stuff like that. So this is this is very beautiful and I'm very curious of like where you know this mystery is gonna go. Yeah, yeah. And I think one thing, um it has um that just a side note that kind of took me by surprise was um, you know, they're from the, the countryside, so they have this dialect, so when you're reading in English, it's like, what are they trying to say? You know, like, yeah. dialect okay. is very strong, and I, I get yeah. that sense. And the translator did a good job of, you know, like, you know, portraying that in English, the dialect. From, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. You know. That's um, a, that'll be interesting. Yeah. So it's not, yeah, it's not like a misprint or anything. Like at first, I was right. kind of thrown, thrown off by it, <laughs> but it's yeah, they're just trying to show you that, you know, they're from different kind of, you know, countryside and the city side. Right. So, yeah. Right. Cool. And uh, really, that is it. That Those are all the digital debuts uh, series that are going to be debuting uh, this coming March. So again, if uh, you would like to see a uh, full chapter one preview of any of the series that we talked about today, all you have to do is go to kanonchi.us. And uh, if you want to follow along and uh, see, uh, we usually talk about new releases uh, that every week. Um, when we have sales, and also when we have uh, promotions. Um, like I believe we are gonna be uh, closing out our wallpaper promotion for this sort of month of love uh, celebration that we've been doing in February, uh, where you can get desktop as well as mobile wallpapers uh, for you know your computer and phone uh, with like focuses on uh, lots of fun series, uh, lots of fun shoujo romance series like I Bet has Got Me Now, um, trying to think uh what other series uh we have uh love sick ellie love sick ellie right. yeah a sign of affection a sign of affection um, and like uh, plenty more so uh please check out kanacha.us uh where we post our news and please check out uh social media you can find us on twitter instagram as well as facebook at kanacha manga uh for all the latest news about kanacha manga being published in the movies all right. Well, Tomo, thank you for uh, joining on this very special Kodansha Live panel by yeah. panel. And this was fun. Uh, yeah, we uh, we hope to see you all again. Uh, yeah, if you and, liked it, yeah. please let us know if you want more panel by panels. And yeah. we'll uh, see you again in the next one. Yep. Well, thank you again, everybody. All right. Yeah, thank you, Ivan. Thank you, everyone, thank for you joining time. in. Bye-bye.